How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now, it has been a few days since I've last uploaded a video. The reason being, I was a bit on holiday out in the bush, seeing some lions, leopards, wildlife, just having a relaxing time because I don't really have a lot of holidays anymore. So, went out for a whole day, but I'm back now with some more tech news. So starting off with our first topic, we again have a lot more information from AMD. And we already talked about the Ryzen 3000 series desktop CPUs, but now we have information about their new mobile processors. So first up, we know that these new CPUs are going to be called the Picasso APUs. So again, we'll have the CPU and the GPU on a single chip, but unfortunately we don't have any specifications about these uh, iGPUs as of yet, so we will have to wait for more detail about that, but we do have some specifications of the CPU side. So first up, we have the 300U, which has two cores, two threads. Uh, we don't have a, a base clock for it yet, but it's going to have a Vega 3 graphics, which we believe is going to have 192 stream processors. Then we have uh, the 3200U, which has uh, two cores and four threads, has a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz, and will also have a Vega 3 graphics. Then we have the 3300U with four cores, four threads, a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz, and then a Vega 6 graphics with 384 stream processors. Then we have the 3500U, which has a four cores and eight threads with a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz, and we'll have a Vega 8 graphics with 512 stream processors. And then finally, the 3700U with four cores, eight threads, a lower boost, a base clock of 2.2 gigahertz, but will have a Vega 10 graphics with 640 steam processors. Now, something that I did find a bit interesting was that Geekbench, where these uh, specs was leaked, did show that these new CPUs show up as Raven Ridge, which we do know is already the previous generation CPUs. So this might be just a false uh, indicator on a Geekbench site where they don't have the clear label for these new CPUs yet. Or it could mean that they're only 12 nanometer refreshes and uh, not 7 nanometer CPUs, which will be quite a bummer. But for all of that, we will have to wait closer to the release date, which should, should be at CES 2019 early next year. Then we do have some more GPU news from AMD, where about two weeks ago they trademarked their Vega to a brand, which does indicate that they're planning to release their new GPUs soon-ish. Not exactly you know when. Now if you are a gamer, don't get too excited for the Navi gaming GPUs because most likely we won't see them anytime soon because usually with launches of new GPUs, we see the higher end workstation or pro consumer GPUs first and then later on we get our gaming GPUs. So for the first ones, we'll probably see the Vega Pro and the data center GPUs uh, being launched probably at CES 2019 as well. And then a lot later, probably like at Computex 2019, we'll see the gaming GPUs or around there. But moving on to some of the blue team's news and kind of the red team as well, because NVIDIA and RED actually announced that they have been working together to create a CUDA accelerated RED code raw decoding SDK that actually makes it possible for a real-time playback of a RED's 8K 24 FPS footage without needing to cache the footage first. As for the GPUs that you will need to actually be able to run it at real time, uh, NVIDIA showed off with one of their Quadros RTX 6000 GPUs, which, yeah, we're not really going to get as more consumers. But if you do have a RAID camera, you most likely will own one of these, and you will go for one of these. But 
if you do run a smaller system, you don't have to go for a quarter RTX, you can still go for some of their more affordable ones, and then also like a 2080 Ti, still good enough for 4K or 8K editing. Then next up, we have an announcement from Razer, where they're kind of a bit late to the party, where they have opened up a soft miner, which as you guys know with all of the mining and everything that was going on, you mine cryptocurrencies and then you could sell them, make money and so on. But now Razer has announced their soft miner, which doesn't mine cryptocurrencies, but loyalty rewards, where then you get Razer Silver coins to purchase games. But it's still most likely you're mining cryptocurrencies and then they convert it and then just pay you out in their Razer Silver coins, which is a virtual currency anyway. It is again a bit late to the party, the entire cryptocurrency bubble has popped and it's definitely not profitable anymore. If we will look at Nice Hash's profitability calculator, something like a 2080 Ti only makes you around 50 cents per day and then you still need to pay for the electricity. So it's definitely not going to be profitable and some of the calculations that was going on shows that with Razer Soft a Miner, you will make around 500 silver coins a day. They didn't really specify on what hardware you're going to use. So let's say also a 2080 Ti. So for a new game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you need around 98,000 silver coins which is going to take you around 196 days to pay for that game and then you still need to pay for your electricity so make that your entire lifetime because you're not going to be able to afford that then moving on we all know china really likes to ban stuff We've seen it with a lot of the services, products, everything that kind of comes out from the West uh, or not being made in China. They want to ban because they don't like it and they've got an excuse for some reason. And one of the newest things was that the Chinese government's a new online ethics review committee banned 9 games and are looking to ban 11 more. The reason for this is because they say it promotes incorrect values which they just decide what values is correct or, what, or what's not. So they banned Fortnite and PUBG, two of the biggest games in the world at the moment, Fortnite the biggest. So they got rid of that and they're also looking to ban Overwatch, the Hublo, WoW and League of Legends if they don't correct their actions. So what they mean are by correcting action for World of Warcraft and League of Legends, they have inharmonious chat rooms. So a lot of people saying some really not nice stuff to the people. Uh, and then also for League of Legends and Overwatch, having revealing female characters that promotes incorrect values. Now, I, I will say that some of the games do show off a bit too much skin. We see this in all of the games out there. We've seen some of the memes as well, where the female character has like plate mail armor, but it's just kind of a bikini, which, yeah, it doesn't really make that much sense. But this is also something that we see everywhere, not just in China, and they're just the ones trying to correct it now. Now for the chat rooms, it looks like that the games might just need to ban the entire chat rooms completely because they don't have control over what the people are saying. They do already have some filters or, or some words being censored, but it only goes so far and people always can get around that. So the best way is probably just to ban the chat rooms entirely, but then you won't be able to play with your friends. Then next we saw that Corsair announced a Dummy Avenger Pro DIMMs. We actually did already see this with a Gigabytes of Aorus RGB memory where they had their 16 gig kits 
but only two of the DIMMs was actually fully functioning. The other two was just RGB dummy DIMM modules. So we're seeing that Corsair is also selling these now. I do find it actually quite cool, especially if you want to fill up all of your memory modules. So now you'll be able to do that. It is just a bit more pricey. It's, a, it's, a, it's an extra expense that you have to pay. So it's costing around $40 or 700 Rand on Rebel Tech here in South Africa. Uh, I will be looking if I can get my hands on one just to do a review and show you guys, but it pretty much looks exactly like their Vengeance Pro RGB memory. So that is pretty much it for our tech news video. It's good to be back. Uh, good to have some technology again when I was at the, uh, uh, on, at the Safari. There wasn't any signal. I had to struggle. I had to go around searching for signal and then I got like edge. So I didn't really post anything. But I'm back now, looking to make some new videos for you guys, and I do hope you guys enjoyed the videos, this one and the ones to come. So thanks for watching guys. Again, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always, and then I will check all of you next time. Cheers guys.